of the first marriage? You and I as Seventh-day Adventists are guilty of spiritual adultery. Which is exactly what he's writing about, Paul is writing about, in Romans 7, verse 2. Let's make very sure that we understand what Paul is writing about here. In Romans 7, 1 through 6. Question. Is the law of God, the Ten Commandments, in my application, the first husband? Is the law of God, the Ten Commandments, in Christ's enemies? Yes or no? No. Second question. Is the law of God, the Ten Commandments, and my sinful nature enemies? Yes. yes. The first husband, the law, is holy, just, and good. And to suggest otherwise is blasphemy. In the first marriage, I am a sinner incompatible with the law. Therefore, that marriage can never work. Because it's doomed to failure. Is that biblical? We studied it for 14 weeks. Galatians 5, 17. In the first marriage to the law, we serve out of fear of punishment. Because our best sincere efforts always fall short of the demands of the law. The first husband. Is that biblical? Romans 7. 17, 21, and 23. Time does not permit me to read all of the scriptures. But if you're interested, you can look them up for yourself. The result is what? The law curses us and condemns us to death. What death? The second death, from which there is no resurrection. In the second marriage, however, to Christ, under grace, we serve in newness of what? Of the Spirit. Romans 7, 6. What we were incapable of doing in the first relationship with the first husband, Jesus now guarantees that we can do under grace. Why? Because we now have a husband in the second marriage that not only sympathizes with us, but gives us help. Because under grace, he now recognizes my weakness, my sinful nature's weakness, but he is able, now that I choose to be married to him, to produce righteousness in me. Is that biblical? Hebrews 4.15. Paul says in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who what? Strengthens. Strengthens me. When married to Christ, we now look at the righteous requirements of the law, not as a price of salvation, but as the natural fruits that the Holy Spirit guarantees it will produce in us because we're married to Jesus. And Jesus' Holy Spirit produces these results. Is that scriptural? We studied it for 14 weeks. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. In the second marriage, our hearts are joyful, filled with gratitude, and we can say with Paul, for me to live is Christ, and to die to the terms of the first marriage is what? Gain. Philippians 1, 21. It is my prayer that each of you will get rid of your present spouse, the law, the law, marry your lover, Jesus Christ, and live happily ever after with God's blessing. <laughs> Do you like that option? Amen. It's biblical. God is not only approves of this divorce from your present spouse, the law, the law, but he's most anxious to perform the wedding ceremony for your second marriage with Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you and live happily ever after in your relationship with your second husband. Our closing hymn is number 309.
only one way can we can do it. And that is that we surrender all to Jesus who is most anxious to marry us. Amen. We thank you for answering this request because we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.